Welcome to 2nd Edition Wargaming, I'm Rob, and in this video we're going to cover 2nd Edition Hand-to-Hand -hand Combat Phase. Second edition hand-hand combat phase. It's the third phase in the turn after movement and attacking. And like the psychic phase, both players get to take part, dealing attacks and damage to their opponent. Hand-hand -hand combat is normally initiated by charging the closest unengaged model, although not always. And providing models anywhere on the battlefield are in base contact, then they'll get to fight in the hand-to-hand -hand phase. Uh, models in combat have a 360 degree arc and can fight multiple opponents using pistols, um, designated close combat weapons and natural weapons such as claws. Once two models are joined in hand-to-hand -hand combat, they get to roll the amount of die equal to their attack characteristic. Now any model with any combination of two viable hand-to-hand -hand combat weapons would get an additional attack die. So for instance, an orc with a bolt pistol and an axe would get his one attack from his attack characteristic and an additional attack for having two close combat weapons. Now both players roll the amount of dice that that model gets and picks the highest result and adds it to the weapon skill of that model, giving them a, a combat score. And the the model with the highest combat score wins the combat and can hit their opponent as many times as the difference between the scores. So, for instance, if a Space Marine has a score of 6 and the Orc has a score of 8, the Orc will get two hits on the Space Marine. Now, wounding and armor saves are worked out just like shooting, except using the stats of the uh, close combat weapons. Now, there are ways to modify that result. And uh, if a model initiated the combat by charging, then it will get plus one to its combat score. So, uh, as a previous uh, example, the Marine with six would be bumped up to seven um, if he had charged into that combat also um, every six that you roll after your first six uh, is an additional critical hit and that gives you a plus one uh, to your combat score also every one that your opponent rolls is called a fumble and that one gets added to your combat score also if you're higher up than your opponent you also get a plus one to that score uh, there are some negatives, um, a minus one if you're encumbered uh, through carrying a heavy weapon or um, another minus one if you're fighting um, an opponent who's defending a, an obstacle, although that only counts on the turn that you charged. Another way to affect the combat score is to parry and this can be done with each weapon uh, or war item of war gear that has the parry uh, rule in its description. And by parrying, you force your opponent to re-roll his highest dice roll, hoping that he'll get a much lower roll and, and therefore affect his total combat score. Um, if both models can parry, then they cancel each other out one for one. Fighting multiple opponents in hand-to-hand -hand combat works exactly the same way as before, except every opponent after the first gets a plus one attack die and plus one to their weapon skill. So if our Marine was on his fourth opponent in that round, that opponent would have plus three attack die extra and plus three to their weapon skill. And if that wasn't enough, the player that has the most amount of models in the multiple combat gets to choose the order in which they fight. So that can allow you to either save your best character till last uh, making sure you get all the bonus attack die and all the bonus weapon skill um, to make sure he has a better chance of success. On the flip side to that, it means that a, a squad of sort of lowly orc boys could mob a space marine chaplain and have a, a you know a slight chance of actually bringing them down. The winner of the combat gets to make a special two inch follow up move. This is done in the hand to hand combat phase and can be made in any direction. Uh, can be used to clamber over an obstacle or even to move into hand-to-hand -hand combat with another model although they won't be able to fight again this phase and they won't count as charging when it comes to the next hand-to-hand -hand combat phase this move i believe is designed just to keep the assault going if you want to get deeper into a squad that you're attacking or should you kill your opponent and find yourself stood in the open then you can use that extra two inches to try and get back into cover 
Breaking from combat in second edition is an almost suicidal affair. Um, the unit that wants to break has to fight with a weapon skill of zero and cannot parry, so just their attack dice. And should they survive the torrent of their opponent's blows, they automatically suffer from broken morale and flee 2d6 away from the enemy. So not good. And um, I still struggle now to find a tactical advantage to using this rule. Uh, later on, Games Workshop staff did amend the rules, either through the journals or the Q&A, to allow models on 40mm bases or models that count as two spaces for transport purposes to be able to break away from hand-to-hand -hand combat without penalty. Um, vehicles, of course, always being able to just break from combat without penalty. Okay, the mention of vehicles there brings us nicely onto the last bit, and that is hand-to-hand -hand combat with vehicles now the original second edition vehicle rules or fighting vehicle rules were added to in citadel journal 7 in the article tank fest and some of those rules will be mixed in to the bits i mentioned now now vehicles are charged just like any other model to initiate hand to hand combat um, but if the vehicle's going over 10 inches in speed then the model has to take a successful initiative test in order not to be hit by the vehicle's ram value uh, once joined in hand to hand combat if the vehicle has a weapon skill statistic like a dreadnought then you fight as normal rolling attack dice and other modifiers if the vehicle doesn't have a weapon skill like a land raider then the attacking model literally just gets the its attack characteristic of free hacks on the vehicle um, obviously making it very vulnerable to infantry attacks um, there are a plethora of other rules um, such as being able to use grenades and ranged weapons in hand-to-hand -hand combat against vehicles bonus armor penetration dice and the it's gonna blow special rule for when a vehicle detonates um, but I think we'll save those uh, for another video just on vehicles. Um, for now, what I think we should do is go to the tabletop and uh, try and run through some of the uh, rules that I've mentioned here. Okay, so here we are on the tabletop. We've got five evil sums boys here armed with bolt pistols and axes and clubs and we've got three tactical space marines here and a sergeant armed with a chainsword and a bolt pistol so uh, at the beginning of the turn in the movement phase it would be declare charges the orc player would declare a charge from these onto these and then you'd have compulsory movements that would take place all over the battlefield and then you'd move charges so let's go ahead and do that uh, an orc would normally move four inches uh, and double that for a charge. They're well within range. And let's double up here and here since the orcs outnumber them. Okay, so then you'd move on to the remainder of movement that isn't charges um, and then you would go into shooting and then into the hand-to-hand -hand combat phase. So providing nothing had happened to this slot in those uh, previous phases, they would fight in hand-to-hand -hand combat. Now, the Orc player has the multiple combats here, two, and a single one-on-one, -on -one, so we'd do that first to resolve it. Now, the Orc um, has one attack characteristic of one, so that's one die, and he also has two close combat weapons, so that is a second attack for having two close combat weapons. Now the tactical spray screen has got a bolt gun um, and a bolt pistol, so he doesn't have two close combat weapons. He only gets his one attack characteristic die. So let's go for the orc first. He has a weapon skill of three, but he did charge, so he gets plus one modifier. So that's a weapon skill of four, plus whatever he rolls. Okay, two threes. He'll add the three to his four, giving him a total of seven. The space ring has a standard weapon skill of four. So let's see what he gets. Oh, good roll. So he's actually on nine. So the space ring gets nine versus seven, gets two hits on the orc. Okay, now he's hit, uh, shooting with a bolt pistol. Uh, it's a strength four. The toughness of the orc is four, so it's fours to wound. One wound, it's a minus one save modifier, and the orc only has flak armor, which is a six, so that orc is dead. Now, this marine uh, has a two inch follow up move because he won the combat. So, what he would 
probably do is go in there to support one of his uh, one of his colleagues. Let's say the sergeant's within range, so he's going to pile in here and engage that orc. He can't fight this hand-to-hand -hand combat phase um, and it doesn't count as charging when it comes to the next hand-to-hand -hand combat phase. Okay, so let's move on to the multiple combat here. We've got two orcs going in there. Let's take the first one. Now the orc player again can choose the order of combat because he has the multiples. Uh, although this space marine is in, in the hand-to-hand -hand combat, he's only engaged to one orc, whereas this uh, sergeant is engaged to two orcs, so the orc gets to choose your player gets to choose now uh, technically i suppose the easiest way of saying it is this is a multiple combat but these two are not a multiple combat okay so the first orc comes in again he's got weapon skill three plus one for charging and he gets his two die one for his attack characteristic and one for having two hand hand combat weapons good roll six um so that would give him a total of ten now the space marine sergeant has got, got a chainsaw which has the parry capability and he's probably not going to let that six um, stay because it, it would be pretty hard to beat. So he's going to parry that six, forcing the orc player to re-roll that six. And much to the uh, marine's uh, relief, that is now a three which will go down the uh, the cure dice so the orc will have to take his next highest which is four so he had uh weapon skill three plus one for charging four plus four eight now the space marine sergeant has an attack characteristic of one but he also has two hand hand combat weapons the chainsaw and the bolt pistol so he gets two dice as well so remember that four is the the number he needs uh, eight in total is the number he needs to beat he has a basic weapon skill of four Three, so not as good. So four, five, six, seven. He's lost by one to that orc, and there's not a lot he can do about it. So the orc gets one hit on him with a bolt pistol. Strength four, toughness four, fours to wound, no wounds. Start the sergeant lives to fight another combat, and that will be the second orc in this multiple combat. So again, the Space Marine Sergeant gets his two dice. The second Orc gets his two dice, his attack characteristic and two hand-to-hand -hand combat weapons. But he also gets a third die for being the second opponent. And he also gets a plus one weapon skill for being the second opponent. So, weapon skill three, plus one for charging, plus one for being the second opponent. That means he's starting on a base of five, plus the highest dice roll. Okay, we've got a fumble. We've got a six and we've got a two. So he's five plus six. He's now at, at this point on 11. The one goes over to the sergeant. Of course, the sergeant won't stand for that again. He's going to try and parry that six, make the orc re-roll that six. Two, excellent. So now the orc that was on five base plus six is now on five base plus two, giving him seven in total. Now, again, the sergeant starts on a weapon skill of four. Five because of the orcs fumble and ten in total. So he's actually got three hits on the orc. Bolt pistol or chainsaw, doesn't matter, they're both strength four minus one save modifier. So toughness as an orc is four, fours to wound. Oh, lucky as well, one wound. It's a minus one save modifier. So the orcs flak armor won't save. And he's dead. Now, at this point, we would look at a break test for the Orcs, as they've taken 25% casualties, and there's a good chance they would break and flee from the battle. But just to carry on with the hand-to-hand -hand combat, we'll ignore that at this point. So, the Sergeant, because he's still engaged, he can't follow up, because he, although he won the combat, he hasn't completed the combat, so he has to stay, he doesn't get his follow-up move. So we move on to this lone tactical Marine now. We know he only has one dice, we know the first Orc has two, Let's roll what he gets. Four. Two fours. So he's a three plus one for charging. Four. Eight in total. The space ring is a four. Plus four. So they're both tied with a combat score of eight. There's no parries to take place and there's no other modifiers at the moment. Now the orc initiative I believe is two and the space marines is four. So in a tie in combat scores initiative gets highest initiative gets one hit so the tactical marine has managed to get one hit on the orc now he is armed with a bolt pistol strength four toughness four force to wound it's a wound 
Minus one, so no armor save for the orc, and he's dead. But he doesn't get a follow-up again because he's tied into hand-to-hand -hand combat with the second orc. So back to his one attack, the orc, one for his attack characteristic, one for having two hand-to-hand -hand combat weapons, and an additional die for being the second opponent against the marine, plus an extra one to his weapon skill. So the orc is weapon skill three, plus one for charging, plus another one for being the second opponent, giving him a base of five. Oh, fumble over to the marine. A 6 and a 4, so he's now on 11. 5 plus 6, 11. Now, this Marine can't parry, so he has to take what the Orc gets. Now, he's got a weapon skill of 4, plus 1 for the Orc's fumble, which is 5, 6, 7. So the Orc is on 11, the Marine is on 7, and that's 4 hits from the Orc on the Space Marine. Um, now an orc is normally a normal orc boy is normally strength three, but um, the rules. Were, I don't know if it was a Q and A or what happened, but they anyone wielding an axe um, would gain a plus one to their strength, and I think this was to counter the fact that no one wanted to take axes because with a sword you could parry and with an axe you couldn't. So. Um, I, I'm not sure if it's fan based or whether it's from the, the old GW studio, but they gave a plus one to strength for axes. So in this instance, the orc is going to attack with a strength three plus one for the axe. So a strength four versus the space marines toughness four falls to wound. OK, there's a chance here. Only one wound got through the space marines armor. It's a minus one for strength four, so the Space Marine's three plus armor save has been modified to a four plus. Let's see if he can make it. And he unfortunately hasn't. That Space Marine is dead. The Orc has a two inch follow up move, but as you can see here, it's not quite in range of the Sergeant. It will bring him to there. Okay, so into the third round, I believe. Um, let's just say everyone survived any shooting, any psychics, and all that sort of stuff. And these guys are going to fight it out to the end. Again, we're ignoring the, the leadership and, um, and break test rules. Okay, so let's just say we're into the Space Marines um, turn. Now, he has a multiple combat here, so the Orc can choose the order of, of attacking here. But this one is just a Marine on an orc so the space marine will attempt to kill that orc to make it easier on the sergeant when he comes to fight so again no one charge because you followed up into that orc the orc gets the two space marine gets the one and here we go so weapon skill four plus four is eight for a combat score the orc weapon skill three plus four is seven no parries either side, so that's it. The Space Marine has one successful hit on the Orc. Bolt Pistol Strength 4, Orc Toughness 4, Forced Wound. Oh, so close. He won the combat, but the Orc's still alive. So now we move on to the Space Marine Sergeant. And interestingly now, this Orc, this will be the Orc's second opponent. So the Space Marine Sergeant can now actually choose to fight that Orc with the, the, he, him being the Orc's second opponent, if that makes sense. So he's actually going to kind of turn the tide on the Orcs at this point. So what will happen now is the Space Marine gets his characteristic die and his two close combat weapon die but he also gets a third die for being the sec the orc's second opponent okay so now the orc's really quite outmatched and he gets his plus one to his weapon skill so let's work that out the orc has his two dice a three and a two weapon skill three plus three six now the Space Marine Sergeant gets his three dice, plus he's got a weapon skill of four, plus he's the second opponent now, so he gets a weapon skill of five. Oh, one didn't help. So he's on nine. Space Marine Sergeant is on nine. The Orc is on six, plus with the fumble, seven. So he still hasn't won. Nine versus seven. The Space Marine Sergeant gets two hits. Uh, Chainsword, strength four, toughness four, falls to wound. Two wounds, minus one save modifier, the Orc is dead. Now, even though that Orc is dead, as we know, he's still locked in combat, he cannot follow up. But also, this Marine cannot use his two-inch follow-up either, because he did not win the combat. It's only the model that wins the combat that can do the two-inch follow-up move. So now, we're down to the last combat. 
The sergeant's got his standard two, the orc has his standard two, but now the roles are reversed and the orc is the sergeant's second opponent. So he gets the extra dice and he'll get the plus one to his weapon skill. So let's roll for the orc first. He's got a weapon skill of four, uh, sorry, three, plus one uh, for the being second opponent. So he's got a weapon skill of um, four. I can't remember if I charged this turn um or whether it was a follow-up let's say he did so he's now on five plus three dice and a fumble for the sergeant so he's five he's 11 now obviously the sergeant is going to parry that six two so now the orc is on five plus five ten space marine sergeant is on weapon skill four oh, and a one and a two, four, five, six, seven, and the orc's back on 11. So the orc actually now has four hits on the sergeant. Not good. Strength four, toughness four, fours to wound. Oh, oh, four wounds. Armor save for the sergeant, four plus. Only one saved, and the sergeant is no more. Now the orc has won that combat, so he's going to follow up onto the space marine again that doesn't count as a charge last but not least the last combat let's get it done space marine's got one attack orc's got two no charges involved orc sitting on weapon skill three plus three six the space marine's on four ten four hits on the orc with the bolt pistol Bit of revenge for the sergeant. Fours to wound. Two wounds. Minus one save modifier. No save for the orc. Ta-da. Champion. Tactical Space Marine gets to go home and tell everyone all about it. Okay, just thought I'd have a little bit of a bonus round of hand-to-hand -hand combat here for you just to show you how powerful some of the uh, old models uh, were under the other other editions older editions we've got four assault marines here just standard not veteran and we've got a pure stain gene stealer up here okay so we we'll say it's the um tyranids or or uh, brood brother um gene stealer cult turn Gene Steel is going to declare a charge. Now, we bring in fear tests and all that sort of thing. Gene Steel has caused fear in second edition. But as I said, we'll just ignore that for the purposes of hand-to-hand -hand combat. The Marines pass their fear test, move charges, is into combat. Now, the Marine has attack characteristic of one, and he also has two hand-to-hand -hand combat weapons, a bolt pistol and a chain sword. The Gene Stealer has four attacks as standard, a weapon skill seven. Okay, let's roll for the Marines first. He's got a weapon skill of four, plus three, giving him a total of four, five, six, seven. Gene Steeler was weapon skill seven, plus one for charging, eight, and whatever he rolls. Okay, one, that'll help the Marine out a little bit. Six, that was a five and a four. Now the Marine's got a chainsaw so he can parry, so he's definitely going to parry that six to try and give himself a better chance. Oh, mayhem. Let's roll that again. Oh, six. So it backfired on that occasion for the Marine. Um, so now we're looking at four, five, six, seven, eight. So the Marine has a combat score of eight. The Gene Stealer, seven. Plus uh, one for charging eight, um, plus six, so uh, 14. Six hits on the um, Assault Marine. Uh, Genius is a strength four, so it's twos to wound. All wounds. And the Space Marine has to save of uh, his three plus will be modified to a six because it's a minus three save modifier. Um, yeah, I think that's always saved one. There you are. That's that. Okay, now um, the Gene Steel is going to follow up his two inches into that other Marine. And then we move on to the rest of the uh, the battle uh, through the psychic phase and all that. Back through into the movement phase. So in the Space Marine's turn, movement phase is going to declare a charge with these two remaining Space Marines into that Gene Stealer. Try and take it out. Now, because the Space Marine has the multiple combat, 
he can choose the order. So what he'll do is he'll use the space marine that didn't charge, who got followed up into by the gene sealer as the first sort of sacrificial combat um, to try and give his other guys a bonus. Okay, so let's give that a try. Now the space marine's weapon skill four, as we know, two dice. That'll help with a six and a three. The gene sealer didn't charge, it only followed up. So now that's a weapon skill seven and a six so obviously the assault marine is going to parry that six try and get a one no such luck it's a five so the gene steer is now on 12 and the assault marine is on his weapon skill of four plus six ten so that's two hits the gene stealer has on the assault marine again twos to wound two wounds sixes to save and he's gone um, obviously, the Gene Stealer can't move or follow up since because he, he's already in combat with the others. Now, the Space Marine, doesn't matter which one, let's pick this guy here. He's going to go in with that. He's got his two normal attacks plus for being a second opponent to the Gene Stealer. So, uh, he, and he charged his turn. So, he's weapon skill four. He plus one for charging, weapon skill five. Plus one for being a second opponent, weapon skill six. He has a very good chance here. Six. Plus six gives him a weapon skill of 12. Okay, now the Gene Stealer is just on his standard weapon skill seven. <laughs> Look, there you go, two sixes. So that's a critical hit. That's a plus one to the Gene Stealer. But of course, he's going to try and parry one of those sixes. Yeah, which he succeeded, uh, denying the Gene Stealer the plus one for the second six. So the Gene Stealer is now on 13. And this Marine's on 12. So even then, the Gene Stealer's got one hit on the, the Assault Marine. It's a two plus to wound. And the Marine has to save on a six. And he's done it. He's still in the fight. Okay, now we're on to the third opponent for the Gene Stealer. He gets his two attack characteristic, two hand-to-hand -hand combat weapons, um, an extra die... He got the extra die for being a third opponent. Now he'll get an extra die on top of that for being uh, for the second opponent. He'll be an extra die for being the third opponent. So two extra attack die plus two to his weapon skill. Okay, six, four, three, two. So he's got weapon skill of four plus the two for being multiple opponents. There's six. He's on twelve. Let's borrow that. Now the Gene Stealer is on seven as normal. Very, very good. Now he's going to parry the Gene Stealer six, obviously. Oh, didn't help him that time. So Gene Stealer is on 13. And our Assault Marine third opponent of the Gene Stealer is on 12. So one hit on the Assault Marine. Two to wound. No wound. They're both in the fight. Okay, so again, we go through a whole other phase and assuming nothing happens to interfere with this hand-to-hand -hand combat, we come through into the next hand-to-hand -hand combat phase and these guys are all locked. Now, as I said, no one's going to break because it's almost suicide to break. So we've got no charges this term and we're back to uh, just two m multiple combats. So this guy's going to go in again with his two dice. He's got a weapon skill of four. Let's give it a go. That gives him an 8 in total. The Gene Seer's got 7, no charges. Crikey. Okay. A 1. So we've got 4, 8, 9. The Gene Stealer. He's going to parry the Gene Stealer's first 6. Yep, that's helped him a little. Gene Stealer's on 13. He's on 9. That's 4 hits against the Assault Marine. And we know how that goes. 2's to wound. All wounds. 6's to save. Good night, Vienna. He's out of there. That leaves this poor uh, Marine. I was going to call him something else for a second there. Uh, he's got his two dice. He's got additional for being a second hand hand component plus and the plus one. So he's got weapon skill four, five. Not bad. Eleven. Gives him a chance. Gene Stealer, seven. One. Helps. Six, four, two. He's going to parry the six. The Marine's going to parry the Gene Stealer 6. 1. That might get him through. Okay, so the Gene Stealer is on 7. 11. The Marine is on 4. 5 for being second opponent. 
six, seven, thirteen. Two hits on the Gene Stealer. Strength four, toughness four, force to wound. One wound. Minus one save modifier. Gene Stealer saves on five or six. That's a six for the Gene Stealer. And he's dead. Hope you enjoyed that. Just a little look at Gene Stealers in 2nd edition and why they are so feared. Okay, well I hope that was clear enough to follow and that you enjoyed watching. And I hope that all 9th edition Tyranid players are suitably jealous of the ferocity of Gene Stealers in the, uh, the old editions of the game. Um, if there's any other subjects on 2nd edition that you want me to cover, then please put them in the comments below and I'll try my best. And uh, thanks for watching.